This video was funded by my amazing Patreons. If you would like to have access to the behind the scenes, see the videos early, and influence the creation, please feel free to check the link below. Istria, 1655. Through the vast Aleppo pine trees, between the rolling hills of Istria's luxurious countryside, lies a village known as Kringa. With its medieval houses jettying over the stone streets, and the elegant church fitted with an ornate steeple, the life here is rather tranquil and idyllic. The people of this tight-knit community allocate their days planting crops under the hot Mediterranean sun, and selling the produce at the town's inner market. It's at the center of town where a shadow of its origins could be seen. From being built on the spot of an Iron Age edifice, where by this time in history, man had separated itself from beast, to much later being an impressive Roman fortress, holding strong in one of history's most prominent empires. At night, when the air becomes cool as the sun retreats behind the hills, the villagers return to their homes to rest from the day's sweltering heat while others spend their time in the local tavern enjoying the music and festivities. The small town of Kringa doesn't realize it, but a sickening miasma is brewing. At the local tavern, many of the town's residents are enjoying the music and food. Huddled in with the local inhabitants is a man by the name of Jor Grando Alavik. He's 76 years old and quite an unremarkable individual with nothing to set him apart from the rest of the villagers. He has a wife whose name has been lost to time, and two children by the names of Anna and Nicola. According to some, Hjord is rumored to be quite a vile character, with a repulsive disposition, while others declare in more extreme cases that he is a sorcerer, and that throughout his life, Hjord would stalk and kidnap children in and around Kringa, and when the time was right, feast on their blood to wane off death. The rest of the patrons don't know this yet, but Hjor Grando Alavik will soon become something of legend, and terrify this small community for nearly two decades. It's 1656, and a dark cloud is looming over the Alavik family. Standing here in the local cemetery, surrounded by the names of those once loved and some forgotten, Father Giorgo reads the burial rites as they lay Hjor Grando into the ground. As the family grieves, casting their pain to the heavens, they wish for his soul to now finally be at peace. It is not known if he was suffering from an illness and died under the loving care of his wife, or if his death was sudden. After the service, the family say their final goodbyes and make the sorrowful walk back home. Now templed in twilight, most of the townsfolk are dragging their weary bodies home from the grueling work in the fields. As many rest their heads under the waxing gibbous moon, a grotesque figure rises from the grave. Its flesh decayed, fetid and rotten, a face of twisted cartilage and sinew, tainting the landscape with each gnarled step. Pure Grando Alavik has returned as a Strigoi. It doesn't take long for the residents to begin reporting of a strange knocking at their doors, even scratching at their windows. With each passing night, their terror becomes even more oppressive as sightings of the abomination are whispered about the town. Many take refuge in the church, being consoled by Father Gjorgo, who promises them that this evil will pass and that there is no need to be afraid. But there is one resident who has the most horrifying tale to tell. After the service, when the villagers return to their homes, one of them remains behind. Father Gjorgo starts to attend to his duties, unaware of his lingering guest. When he looks up, he realizes it's the widow, and her face is a picture of pure terror and shame. Not being able to harbor this dark secret, she breaks down in fear, her frantic voice a cacophony of unintelligible shrieks. Father Gjorgo tries to calm the widow, 
and after some time, she tells him what happened the night before. As the town sleeps, a thunderous roar splits the heavens. The widow lays in bed, grieving the loss of her husband, her tears melding with the rain. She remembers his smell, his touch, lost in the black mire of painful memories of a life now sadly departed. But there is another smell, something putrid and rotten, a miasma cloying in the air like a thick, oozing wound. But it's not the smell she finds most disturbing. A sound can be heard weaving with the thunderous roars, and ever so slowly, it begins to approach from the black. Before her, partially obscured by the oppressive gloom, is a rancid corpse. A hollow shell of her former husband, its wilted lips cracked dry against rotting gums, and simultaneously breathing and gasping for air. The widow is paralyzed by fear, her feeble bones turn to granite as the creature reaches out to touch her, its yellow talons sharp enough to flay the skin. As the abomination climbs onto the bed, the widow prepares for her death, but the creature does something far more sinister. The widow is violated by the beast. After hearing the story, Father Giorgo does what he can to console the widow. Upon her leaving, a crushing weight manifests itself in his chest. He knows the town he loves is in great danger. Much later, the priest is preparing to shut the church for the night. But once again, he notices there is another guest sitting at one of the pews. His first thought is that the widow has returned, finding solace in holy ground. But then the smell hits him. The putrid meat. The creature sits there staring at the priest, a predatory glare sizing up its prey. Father Giorgo, in a panic, grabs his crucifix and holds it towards the creature. Feeling protected by his deity, he demands Ostrigoi to return to the pits of hell. The creature, in retaliation, almost seems to cackle as it flees the church, but it was unaffected by the priest's demands. Klinger now descends into utter darkness. With each passing night, a villager is savagely attacked by the Strigoi, their bodies utterly eviscerated and butchered. The scenes left behind embodied that of a painter's descent into madness, but those who lock themselves away aren't safe either. A plague has accompanied the creature, and somehow it has the ability to choose who it infects. A strange moss-like substance slowly eats away the flesh, and boils swell and disfigure the host. Their fears become so extreme that going out at night is seen as a death sentence. With sickness and death taking place each night, Klinger is slowly dying. 16 years later. The once beautiful town of Klinger is nearing its final breath. Over the course of nearly two decades, Hjorg Grando Alovic has caused utter carnage. At some point, the widow succumbed to the fear of the beast and perished. His two children, Anna and Nicola, fled to Florence, and the townspeople sit with bated breath as one by one they are hunted. But there is a light in these dark times. A small group of men, one of them now being the old Father Giorgo, are currently discussing a plan to track down the creature and destroy it. The trouble they had was not knowing who or what the beast was. But now, after much discussion, they have come to the conclusion that it must be a Strigoi. And the only person who could have become one was Hjor Grando Alavik. The main belief is if a man feasts on the blood of the living while he himself is alive, when he dies, he shall return as an unholy abomination. There are many other potential ways these people turn, but this is the most common. With the rumors already running rampant about Hjord's apparent past and the fact it only appeared after he died, Hjord is the main suspect, and Father Giorgo promises that this time, 
he will bury him once and for all. That night, after arming themselves with pitchforks, torches and hawthorn sticks, Father Gjorgor leads the men, one of which who also happens to be the town mayor, to the final resting place of Hjor Grando Alavik. Upon reaching the grave, they initiate the first part of their plan. The priest begins to perform an exorcism on the grave, hoping this is a fight of spirit and faith. However, the grave remains silent. Two of the men drive their shovels into the dirt and begin to exhume the coffin. Once it is revealed and opened, they see the beast that has been haunting their town. The grotesque sight causes some of the men to flee in fear, but Father Gjorgo stands strong. Pulling his crucifix, he once again demands the creature to leave this place, but this time, in retaliation, it doesn't laugh. The creature rises from its slumber and slashes the priest, causing him to stumble backwards. Another villager charges at the beast with the hawthorn stick, a supposed weakness to the Strigoi, but it merely snaps against the creature's stomach, its skin as hard as stone. It almost appears as if all is lost, but one man by the name of Stephen Milosic steps forth brandishing his axe, and in one foul swoop, he chops into its neck. The Strigoi lets out a loud shriek as it falls into its grave. Stephen grabs the handle and wrenches it out of the creature, and brings it back down with all of his rage. The creature's wound bleeds profusely and it slowly fills the grave with all the blood it drank over the past 16 years. As the men stand over the creature, they see the blood solidify, cocooning the beast in its spoils. And with that, the Strigoi is dead. Thank you all so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed the episode. I've been Mr. Blank, and you've been watching Beyond the Dark.